Aaliyah, first of all, you're a senior. Like, that's crazy. Crazy. That is crazy. Time flies. I mean, does it feel like it's gone by really fast or has it been a slow burn to get here? No, now that it's senior year, it's like, wow, we like just got here. Like, I, I, I still get my Snapchat memories of when I took a visit here and it's like, there's no way. It was all those years ago. How have you changed from the Aaliyah Boston that we met the summer of what, 2019? Yeah. How have you changed? That's crazy. I mean, I still feel like the same person. <laughs> but um, I definitely think I've gotten funnier, and I think that was proven because you just laughed. <laughs> but I mean, on the court, I think I've just been able to just develop into a monster player. I'm just thankful to God for that, but also the entire coaching staff. And off the court, I feel like I'm just the same old me. How has your life changed from becoming a, you were a top recruit, people knew who you were, but now you're the national player of the year, you're in commercials. How has your life changed from all of this? I mean, it's changed in such a major way and part of that is from NIL, um, just being able to profit off of our name now and be able to get interested with brands that you are interested in. It's like, it's an amazing thing. and. I'm just really happy. It's changed for the better. Speaking of NIL, have you learned a lot about the business world from that? I definitely have. I'm still learning. Let me not go too much because I feel like if I say one wrong thing and my mom sees this, she'll just kill me right there like, Aaliyah, did we not talk about this before? But I've learned a lot. I do know that taxes is for sure a thing that's... <laughs> yes, it's a very real thing. It's not fun sometimes. <laughs> Last year uh, during the summer, it was so much emphasis was on the physical transformation that you underwent to go to your junior year. What was the point of emphasis for you this summer going into the senior year? I mean, just continuing to maintain that aspect, but also my IQ for the game. Um, I'm definitely trying to become a better passer this year, so I've definitely been working on that, especially in these practices since we started official practice, and so just thinking of things like that. Last year, you guys had so much to prove after that Final Four loss. How different does it feel going into this season as the reigning national champions? I mean, it's. I still feel like, you know, we still have to hold on to our ground because it's definitely hard to go back to back and that's definitely our goal this year coming into the upcoming season and so just having that chip on our shoulder going into every game is going to be important for us. Are you motivated in the same way you were a year ago? I definitely am because I mean it's a fresh new season. Yes we won last year but it's not like this year is just magically going to jump back and be like same route, same games. That's not how it's going to go. So I'm like, here we go. It's a new season. We got to come out kicking. The 2019 class, I mean, you guys had so many expectations when you got here. You've delivered in so many ways. What does that class and that group mean to you? Those are my sisters. I mean, everyone on this team, um, I consider my sister, but especially that group. I mean, we still have group chat names and the entire name for no matter what social media app is the Freshies because, you know, we came in together and now it's the senior class. We've, we've been through a lot. I mean, freshman year is always hard. And so coming in with this group, it's like you're not alone. You're definitely not alone because there are five of us. Speaking of that, I want to um, play a game and I want you to give me one word to describe everyone the other four from that class, the 2019 oh, class. Oh gosh, I should have gotten a, like a warm up about this. <laughs> Just take your time, you think, we got time. Okay, first, I none of them killed one me. word to describe Zaya. <laughs> Funny. Bree. Bree, ooh, independent. Ooh, I, that's a good one. Letitia. Oh, Letitia, all right, let's see, like, multi, like, what's, <laughs> How do I say she can really do like everything? Multi-talented? Yeah, multi-talented, that's the word, you got it. Multi-talented, and then Olivia. Liv, Liv is really like the sweetest person ever. Like, I, I'm, so I'm gonna pick the word sweet, but yeah. she is really the sweetest person ever. And then should we just put you in there? Like what one word would you describe? Mm -mm. Okay, no. I'm okay. okay, I don't need it. <laughs> we have seen you over the years become more comfortable in using your platform to speak out on things like racial inequality, gender inequality. At what point in your collegiate career did you really feel comfortable speaking out on these issues? Um, I definitely think after the passing of George Floyd, um, happened. I feel like social media was kind of in uproar um, and everyone had their thoughts and being able to talk to Coach Staley and the entire staff and just see the way that Coach Staley continues to use her platform, especially then it kind of just allowed me to feel comfortable enough to understand that I have a big platform and I it should not just be used for sports but everything that I feel need to. Speaking of Dawn, how influential has she been in you finding that voice and using it when you know that there's going to be a lot of people seeing it. Yeah, she has she has been really influential, su super crucial to that just because Coach Daly, I mean, everyone on social media chooses to pick Coach Daly as the one they want to reply to all the time. But 
one thing about her is that she always responds with such class, but she never stands down. She never just lets anybody talk about her or talk about this team or anyone that she knows in any sort of way without having a response. And she always has her facts correct, so I think that's important too. You are a very spiritual person. How huge and important has your faith been in your collegiate journey so far? Yeah, my faith has been important throughout my entire life, especially during college, because I feel like the years of college is um, where you really grow up. I mean, I came into college when I was 17 years old. So, I mean, now being a senior and about to be 21, it's like, I this is these are my crucial years. And so God has been there for me. There's been tough times when it comes to basketball and even tough times that have happened um, throughout my family or people really close to me. And I've been having one person that I can know I can consistently talk to no matter what, and that's been God, and he's been able to help me through it all. Speaking of that, that's actually one of my questions. Has You spoke about some of those tough moments. Has all of this ever felt like too much? Has it ever felt overwhelming, just all the attention, all the pressure? Are you, like, in my mind? <laughs> no, like, what? What? Um, at, part of it has been a little bit. Um, it's That's actually kind of crazy because I feel like we never really talk about how it can get overwhelming at some point. Um, and I've definitely gotten there, but I've been, I've just been doing a lot of talking. I talked to one of our, um, sports, sports, um, psychiatrists that we have here. I talked to her and she's been a great help because sometimes I feel like I run out of words, except for when I step in that room, it's like all the words just come out flowing and all the tears come out flowing. But it's, it's definitely gotten to there, but I just take my time working my way back to that level headed, comfortable spot. We've talked about mental health a lot just on our station before. How much freer do you feel on the court after going to sessions like that and letting all of that emotion and tension out? Yeah, I mean, I feel like every time I step out of the room with her, I feel like a weight has just been lifted off of me. Sometimes, you know, it's you don't really know how much you're actually carrying on you until you really just take a second to sit down and just talk about stuff. Like, I've talked about things that like I haven't thought about in years, but all of a sudden it's like things are just like coming out because we carry all this weight. It might be the pressures of our sport, it might be the pressures of things that's happening in our family, things in the classroom. And we get like, I don't want to tell anybody about it. Nobody even cares. But somebody's listening all the time. And so I just go there and then on the court, I feel like there's relief because if something's happening on the court and I'm like, you know, I need to go talk about this. I don't know what's happening. You kind of just get a clear, a clear view. And also something that I'm starting to do is take walks during the day and like I'm gonna start listening to audiobooks I so I think that's gonna help. Going back to your spirituality, um, what are the Bible verses or verse that you are really your go-to's to help you in those moments for you? I mean I, I have a lot but the one that I I always stick to is just no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I, I feel like the higher we get you know the more people are gonna want to bring us down and so I just continue to pray that over my life, over my family life um, in everyone's life really just because everyone, I don't want to get too deep, but you know, there are always people that want to see you fail. And so I just continue to pray that over my life and I just know that God has me. So many young girls look up to you. I mean, we go to the CLA and it's just packed with young girls just cheering you guys on. What do you want them to learn from you? I want them to learn from, um, and just understand that I, that we are all people. Like I feel like they look up to us and we're these big idols, but Really, we we're all in that same position. We all came to games um, watching um, our like our our players just shine in front of our eyes, and so I want them to know that you work hard, you have faith, you trust God, and you will really accomplish what He has for you. On the flip side, I've been I've seen you at many events. There are a lot of guys who want to take pictures with you. They're fans. They're like cheering you on. Have you seen more and more guys openly root for women's sports over the past few years as the coverage and everything has gotten better? Absolutely. I definitely have seen a lot more a lot more guys start to openly um, support women's sports, which I think is good because women's sports just has a stigma that we're not as good as the men. And it's it's hard being having to play that sport. And then you look on social media and stuff and people are bringing you down. But I think as as men continue to support other people, it might open the eyes of other people. But if it doesn't, who cares? Because we still rock. So. <laughs> Last year, you just racked up every award possible, and of course, you won the biggest title with your team. With one year to go that we know of, what do you want your legacy to be in the game? I want my legacy to be, you know, one of the best players that have stepped foot um, at the University of South Carolina um, and just have 
to bring a nat another national championship home, be that team that, oh shoot, the entire they went back to back. Like I want to be on that team, um, have that type of conversation. And then for the pros, just continue to dominate when I get there. What women in sports do you admire? Oh gosh, that's hard too. Um, for when it comes to basketball, really all of them, especially the ones that are at higher levels than me already, just because they're somewhere that I want to be. And so I look up to them no matter if they're a guard or a post, no matter if they just got there because they've already accomplished something that's on my to-do list. And also I really um, like Serena Williams. Um, just being a powerful black woman in the sport and in society is just something truly special to be able to watch and it's amazing. We talked about how much the coverage has gotten better for women's sports over the years. Serena, a huge part of that. What would you like to see improve or change even more in the next 10, 15 years? I would like to see us not really have to fight. I feel like right now, yes, the coverage has gotten better, but we're still fighting for better coverage. And I'd also like to see an equal narrative shown across all sports for everybody um, and not just who the media might specifically have a target um, audience for or athlete for. Um, I think a lot of people are really tuning into women's sports, um, especially women's basketball. Um, and I know women's soccer is just something that is out this world. And so just to be able to have the equal coverage, not having to see where, oh, maybe where can we squeeze in a women's sport here where it should be no women. Well, women's basketball is playing tonight, so they're going to be on ESPN. There's no argument about it. What do you know now about how hard it is to win a national championship that maybe you didn't before you had accomplished it? Before we even won it, you know, coach just continued to talk to us about the, the margin of error. It just gets smaller and smaller as the season begins. And so I feel like starting our season off strong with a slight margin of error, understanding that aspect of it will be important for us in the long run. Your hair has become so iconic in this game. I mean, we see stats <laughs> about pink, I know, right? we, it. I know. I like it. I got it. I like it. Yes, I know. We see stats about it. I mean, fans have been like guessing like what color is she going to come out with. We did a feature story on the woman who does your hair. I mean, and it just blew up. What does your hair mean to you and what does it represent? My hair means a lot. Um, I've always been into like bright colors and stuff. When I was younger, I would fake design some shoes, but they'd always be super bright just because I've always wanted to, ju you know, just be seen. Every time you see me, oh shoot, look at those bright shoes. That has to be Aaliyah. And so when I got to college, my aunt, she started telling me, Aaliyah, why don't you just try, add some color? But I was like, I don't really know. I've always done like the light brown, but she was like, oh, just try it. So then I think my first color when I got here was pink and blue. So it's like a cotton candy theme. And ever since then, it's kind of just been like, okay, let's just keep going. But I think it shows who I am. I'm just like a happy and bubbly person. And I'm not afraid to do what I want. I feel like looking at, thinking about what others might think of you. Oh, why would people might judge my pink hair? People might judge my purple hair. But that doesn't really matter because if you want to do it, then you should be able to do it. And so that's what I do. Speaking of how funny you are, I, I've always thought that you were funny, but do you, what do you, do you think the world knows that? I mean, I hope so. I, I hope they see my TikToks. Follow me on TikTok, Aaliyah.Boston, or Instagram, Aaliyah.Boston. It's not hard, but I mean, I, <laughs> I really just try to be myself. And I think part of that too, you could see, oh shoot, she's, she's really funny. And not to sound like I'm talking really high about myself, but I am. And what do you think is something about you that people don't know about you? Ooh, oh gosh, I feel like I'm an open book. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I feel like if anybody has any questions, like I'll most likely probably just tell them. <laughs> when you first got to South Carolina, everyone was comparing you to Asia. They said, are you going to be the next Asia Wilson? Are you going to be the next Asia Wilson? It was like every press conference they asked you that. And every time you said, I don't want to be the next Asia, I want to be the first Aaliyah Boston. Do you feel like you have done that already through your first three years? I think I've definitely started to do that. Uh, hopefully this year we'll, I'll definitely be able to finalize that. But I think I've, um, I think I've just came in and have that mindset of being Aaliyah, just playing the game that Aaliyah does, and just I've been able to do that for the past three years. So yeah. You know, Don didn't mention the COVID year. You know, so is uh, is the WNBA next? Are we getting an encore in 2023, 2024? It would be too easy. What does that mean? It would be too that easy. That means it'd be too easy to tell you. Okay. We have to wait and see. You got to get some suspense for seeing you. I know, year, right? right? Yeah, like, yeah. let's make it. Spooky. I'll ask you again in uh, what? Early April. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ask me then. Okay. I got the answer. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs>